I want to introduce you to Habib Kasim. Um, he's a scrum master, sometimes agile coach, and what he does, trained and experienced in multiple agile frameworks. Wow, over eight years of being a scrum master. I was looking at your LinkedIn profile, lots of experience in there. Um, and this is not the classic interview, uh, what do you know about Scrum? But this is uh, what led us to get to know Habib um, and what he would like to share with the Scrum, scrum world because you're going to be a 5 a.m. master Scrum. So everybody around the world, we have people scattered along all the, all the continents and countries across the world who are going to get to meet Habib and what he does. So, so with that, um, Habib, tell us a little about yourself. What and what you like to do outside the office? Um, first of all, I um, started my Scrum um, journey about eight and a half years ago when I um, stumbled upon um, an article okay. um, about software development life cycle. So I, um, I started reading this article for a few minutes and um, I came across um, the uh, waterfall methodology, of, uh, which is the old and traditional way of producing software. And, you know, I read all about it and the headaches that, you know, came with it, you know, and um, how you can actually move from one step to another without actually completing a step. Uh, and then I also read about Agile, which was like beautiful to me, you know, makes everything easy, makes, um, um, you get your business value, you know, continuously and easy, easily, and you know, as long as you abide by the rules of, uh, by the four values and you know, twelve principles of agile. Okay. So I was able to read the beautiful thing about agile, making making it more easy, you know, to produce software. Yeah. So um, that actually encouraged me to um, go into Scrum. You know, it's Scrum is one of the um, frameworks under the umbrella of um, Agile. Right. Um, we have other frameworks like Kanban, we have extreme programming, we have Lean, but um, Kanban and um, Scrum are like uh, the most popular and both of them are like pool methodology, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, I was really interested in, in Scrum. So I started reading about Scrum and I'm like, hey, let me go into Scrum. Let's see what's going on there. I started to, you know, get my certification. And um, here yeah, I am today, um, eight years later, you know, in the Scrum world. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like you had a, a a big journey in the Scrum world and where you're at. Eight years is is a fairly long time, right? A lot it of experiences, and and hopefully we'll share some of those experiences as we go through this interview with the the, the audience and the and the people that might be watching. Um, I was reading your LinkedIn profile, and that you're currently coaching and change. And you're one of the things you said. You said. Uh, currently coaching in a changing culture, the company towards scrum principles. I like this transparency, trust, and high level collaboration. Can you tell us more about this activity? What, what, what you're seeing, what you're experiencing as a scrum master, you, these are um, skills. These are the skills you need to have as a scrum master. You have to mm -hmm. be able to, um, full start collaboration within your team. You have to be able to end your trust. You have to be able to coach your team from, um, I mean, you might have a multiple um, team that are new to Scrum. You know, you have to be able to coach them from a um, like immature level to a higher mature level. Okay. You should be able to end their trust. You should be able to protect them from outside influence, and you should be able to use your influence, Scrum Master. You know, uh, to protect them because um, there will be bottlenecks. There will be um, distractions from stakeholders they want them to do certain things they're trying to put them under pressure like um this job i got a few years ago where um during the daily stand-ups daily scrum the um uh the stakeholders will come to this meeting this meeting is meant for the development team to come together uh -huh. to talk about what you're doing and the impediments they, you know um they're having they're having to face so when I got in there, I was uh, able to educate the whole organization. Hey, this is not a meeting for stakeholders. You know, of course, politely, um, the only meeting that is made for stakeholders will be sprint review, where we all come together okay. to and adapt. You know, the product. Um, but I, I was like, anything you really want to add or you want to ask, I'm, I think she just like trying to talk to the product owner, and then he can get that across to to the team. Okay. If you 
have anything you want to add to the screen backlog, you talk to the product owner. If it's something uh, that is of high value, uh, we can consider it in the next uh, in the next print. Cool. Yes. Um, neat. So that that's good. So so what do you see as a role of a scrum master in in their company? Um, first of all, um, a scrum master has different roles. Okay. Um, in a company that is um, adopting agile methodology, a scrum master uh, facilitates uh, the scrum ceremonies, which are uh, sprint planning, make sure the uh, the team uh, uh, stays, uh, they are time, make sure uh, time boxes are enforced um, to these meetings, you know, sprint planning, uh, daily scrum, um, sprint review, and uh, sprint uh, retrospective. You make sure um, the organization adopting, you know, scrum, they, you know, go by these, uh, 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 they uh, go by these meetings. Yeah. You um, coach the team, uh, on self uh, organization uh, self um, organization and cross functionality you um, remove impediments as a scrum master you help the team remove impediments you know bottlenecks you know uh -huh. build your team you protect your team from outside um, influence you know yeah cool that, is, that that's how i've i've seen it too so you're you're it's great hearing that from you and 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 what you've seen cuz i think a lot of people Oh, kind of, kind of relate to that, right? And then, uh, okay, so, so, which, which are the strategies you recommend for leading an agile team, or is the term "lead" the correct term to use? Yeah, um, yes, I think lead is uh, as a scrum master. Okay. Um, you should be able to lead your team. You should be able to instill um, certain qualities in your team. In order to make sure they are um, adopting the uh, agile methodology um, correctly, because there are so many organizations out there, they are not actually doing, they are not adopting agile. Mm -hmm. They think they are doing it, but they are not actually doing it. Uh, you have to um, make sure there is continuous delivery of, um, you know, software like a product. Um, make sure these products are software is being delivered. Um, on time, mm -hmm. uh, make sure there's simplicity, there's face-to-face -face conversation, um, make sure there's uh, sustainable development in your, in your team. And um, you have to encourage simplicity. Um, these are the principles of, of, of Agile. And- um, uh, Is there any yeah. strategies that you use yourself and leading these teams, any practical stuff that you want that maybe people can learn or say, oh, that's a neat idea that how you how you lead those teams. Um, so I usually make sure um, I encourage this team to uh, you know abide by the rules of 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 of, of, of agile. Okay. There are rules. There are, I mean, it's strong. Mm -hmm. What it, it depends on whatever the organization is um, adopting under agile, probably you know Kanban. Scrum down, you know, Scrum. I make sure I encourage the team to, you know, go about the rules and, you know, um, yes. Okay, great. Um, so, so what are which are the keys to use to motivate your team? Tell us your secret, Habib. How do you motivate your team? Give us a secret that we can all run away with and said, I learned a secret from Habib and I'm ready to go, you know, try this on my team. Give me, give me, give us one of your secrets. Yeah. So um, how do I motivate my team? Um, for example, during um, daily stand-up, I think that as an, uh, for example, I make sure the team is well engaged. Everyone yeah. has to speak. Everyone needs to get a chance to speak. Um, you don't want um, some people speaking and some people not speaking. That doesn't really go well. So that, I think that's a way of you know motivating the team, make, making sure everybody's actively engaged, and um, making sure the team you know gets along with you know one another when they're working. You don't want to know what they're doing outside of work. Make sure they're you know um, actively you know collaborating, you know talking about issues. Um, if there's anyone having any issues, making sure um, like um, energy trust, so they can be able like talk to you as a scrum master, so you can actually. Right down and study them 
once you study your team, you know um, the issues they're having, then you can go in and so help them solve it. In Scrum, you help your team, you know, let them solve their own issues. So that that's one of the um, ways of um, actually um, doing that. Okay. Uh, and, um, motivating the team. All right. Um, okay. So how do you overcome those bad days at work? Everybody has a bad day. Is there anything you do to like get over that and come out with that positive attitude that you know I can see in your face? Yeah, I mean <laughs> we are human, so we sometimes you have bad days. All I have to do is just you know probably go to my office, you know sit down, you know try to focus on what actually went wrong, you know, and then try to focus on that. Try to um, think about how to move forward, how to be positive. What what positive what uh, positive things can I take out of this and improve on, and then apply that you know, um, try to um, work on that and apply it to the team as, as a whole. So I mean, if there's so things like that, if there are bad things, you don't you know happen in future. I try to put myself in you know. Sounds like you do a little mini retrospective when you have those bad days, and yes, I'm like by myself. I just sit down and think of what happened, you know, you know okay. what went what went bad, and try to improve on that. You know, try to uh, meditate, and you know. Do you ever, do you ever go out and send like 50 emails to everybody? Oh my God, everything blew up. Or are you gonna go? I don't do that. <laughs> I've yeah, seen people yeah. do that before. I'm like, yeah, oh no, I mean, it works. It works. It yeah. works. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it works. Yeah. Well, good. Um. So tell us about an interaction you saw on a team that really made you happy. Um, interaction on a team that make that makes me happy would be um. Give us an example of one that happened that, that um, you saw. Actually, during one of our retros, our retrospective uh, meetings where we were, you know, trying to see what went wrong and what we could improve on, what went, what we did, you know, better and what we didn't. And so there were actually things I, I myself didn't really you know, notice I didn't catch. And then some of the um, uh, the uh, development teams were actually, you know, they were able to come out and, you know, point out those facts. And, you know, that, really, you know, that brought uh, my attention to that. And then I was able to work with the team and, you know, improve on it. Um, that would be um, being like, est we're not like estimating our stories properly. Mm -hmm. So, um, one of one of the development team um, members actually pointed that out, and that was really very important for us moving forward. So in our next sprint, we actually apply that to you know uh, being able to you know estimate our stories, you know, getting the velocity of the team, what the team can work on in the next right. sprint. Yes. So that sounds like sounds like a good thing. Um, okay. So here's the classic question: What is your favorite scrum ceremony, and why? Right, that's the classic. Um, Everybody <laughs> asks that question. So, what is your favorite scrum ceremony and why? I've never actually thought of that, but okay. I'll I'll pick um daily scrum. Daily scrum. Oh uh, yes, I'll pick daily scrum. Uh, why? Because um in a way it makes you it makes you have a clue of how you think your whole team thinks. Okay. You know, everyone has what they're doing. Everyone knows what they're doing. So being, you know, ask those those three questions like, what what did you you know do yesterday, today, and do you have any impediments? You actually um, make them talk about it. Then you can go on after that and update the um the sprint bond down chat. The mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the bond down chat. Right. You know, yeah, that's you know another way to you know track the team progress with um the daily scrum. You learn a lot from your team. Trust me. Yeah, you yeah. Are. So I mean, I think I'll put I'll pick a daily scrum. You know, okay. the fifteen minutes every day. Good, good. Um, okay. So, how have you helped a team in the past? And give us something you're most proud of. One of your pr most proud achievements helping out a team as a scrum um, master. Okay, so um, I was uh, the a pro owner was um, actually um, assigned to a team. Okay. By the stakeholder, by the stakeholders, but uh, the, this team was just uh, this organization was just transforming from waterfall to agile. Okay. But uh, the product owner was, I think, um, project manager from the you know previous um, 
uh, waterfall. Uh -huh. So he came there with the mindset of, uh, with, with that mindset of, you know, command and control, you know, mindset. Yeah. And yeah. Um, things were not working out. So they were not, they were not really um, practicing agile or scrum in the organization. So, I mean, a, a whole lot of things were mixed up, you know, they were not, um, they were not having just review at the right time. They were not having the daily scrum. The stakeholders were always at the, at the, they were not having the daily scrum at the right time. The stakeholders are always there to break down the next of the development team, putting okay. them under pressure. So I had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the product owner. First of all, I had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with him. I let him, I was able to educate the product owner on the, uh, on his functions as uh, in Scrum. In Scrum okay. is totally different. Agile is totally different from Waterfall. As, as a product owner, there are certain things you do. You are in charge of the product backlog. Um, you are in charge of prioritizing it, you know, working with the team to, you know, um, estimate stories. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was able to um, educate the product owner. I also um, had a meeting with the development team. I was able to ask them a few questions and they were like, they were concerned about the stakeholders attending the meeting. It puts them under extra pressure. And okay. it was the things, you know, working, you know, for them. I had a meeting with um, uh, myself and the product owner. I had a meeting with the stakeholders. I let them know, hey, you can um, attend the meeting if you want, but you are not allowed to ask questions. It's meant for the development team. And then from that, you know, point on, I did a lot of education concerning Scrum, and I was really happy about that. Okay. Okay. Good. Sounds like you did a little bit of one-on-one -on -one outside the the activities of the group, and had some good one-on-one -on -one conversations with your, 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 with your the, uh, stakeholders, and you oh, know, yeah. I was able to bring them everybody together. I was able to brush them up on the you know on, on Scrum and good. um methodology as a whole. Okay. So, what? So let's think about this. What do you do with your scrum teams that you don't see in a scrum master class? So what have you done that, that are like, it's not really in the book or it's not really part of the classes you took before, but what you have used in your scrum um, working with the team? Yeah, being um, able to gain your trust because if you're going to be a servant leader of a team, you should be able to um, gain the trust of this team so they can always you know open up to you if there's any bottlenecks or there's any problem and um also um, um uh, i'm trying <laughs> well i, I trying. you know what i think i think your answer that you came up with was perfect because they don't teach you trust in a in a class right it's not no, in the book. No. If you read the Scrum Scrum Guide, it, it may I think it mentions trust maybe as a word, but it really doesn't talk about your job as a Scrum Master to build that trust and how do you do that. And I think that comes out from your personality, right? Because you're very forthcoming and and, and naturally uh, someone you can relate to, right? And you use that tech, those those things that aren't in the book. I think I think that really comes off well. Um, and would you? And I guess you would recommend that to other scrub masters out there, right? Yeah, I would definitely do. Yeah, I would definitely do. Okay. Um, okay. There's always a question out there. Those distributed teams, right? And I've seen you work for some large corporations in, in LinkedIn, LinkedIn and had some things. That, and I'm assuming you worked with some distributed teams here and there, right? Yeah, um, both onshore and offshore. Okay. What? Um, what is the most difficult thing to work with with a distributed team? And can you tell us something that maybe you did to help mitigate that? Yeah, it's um, actually transforming from waterfall to agile. You know, team lack commitment. Um, teams were not motivated to, you know, actually, well, they were not well trained mm -hmm. on um, agile methodology. So they lacked commitment and they lacked trust. They were not teams were not motivated enough to, uh, to adopt the agile methodology, mm -hmm. you know, and then teams were not, um, were not well educated on this Scrum, Scrum process okay. in, in general. But um, as time went on, I was 
actually able to put my skills to use. I was able to, although it, uh, it took a, you know, a bit of time to change my mindset and let them know things we do in Scrum and um, things we do not do. So okay. that really helped. Yes. That, and you did that with uh, what you did that with distributed teams, offshore, anything, any, teams. any yeah. trick that all you used teams. or anything? All, all new teams. All, all new teams. teams. Yes. Okay. Yes. So what you what you do in your normal Scrum works just as well with distributed teams and reaching out with them. Did you do a lot of one on ones with the people offshore? Um, people offshore, although it was always on, um, you know, on the computer, but right. I was still able to, um, you know, like, for example, um, um, host the, uh, the daily scrum okay. to know exactly what they are doing and maybe a little bit of, you know, um, what they have in common, what they are, the team is actually up to, to actually, um, gain transparency okay to see what they are doing and be able to educate them on um what they are not doing right and i think that was a way of you know of so you thought it. transparency among the teams onshore mm -hmm. offshore really yes. helped get them on board and make them a team yes yes okay awesome um okay and you kind of mentioned it before but well, let's say here what have you ha ever had to do to protect your team? Can you describe an activity and what you learned from it? I think you mentioned about stakeholders and they came in and, and yes. first and did that. Can you talk a little bit about like, how does it feel to be a scrum master to have to step in and protect the team? Because I notice a lot of scrum masters kind of get away from that a little bit. Some go crazy. I've seen like total far end protection that I've seen where they just totally abandon the team. Give, give us an example yeah, well, of something actually, you've done in the past. And, and yeah, actually work with this organization where the stakeholders were, um, you know, uh, actually coming to the um, daily scrum mm -hmm. to actually tell the, um, to actually tell my development team what to do and what not to do. Okay. That's not, um, practice, you know, practicing scrum. Okay. If you're, doing, if you're doing that, I let them know that if you're doing that, you're not practicing scrum. This is how we do. If you, uh, um, as the scrum master, I had a meeting with the stakeholders. I let them know um, you can actually uh, interfere in what the team, like, for example, they were um, trying to uh, um, tell the teams how to order, um, like, uh, items from the product backlog and convert to um, sprint backlog and, you know, on how to, you know, work on the sprint and all that. Yeah. I actually, I was able to stop them from doing that because that was taking a toll on the team, like, like pressure. Yeah. And uh, I was also able to um, have a meeting with the pro owner for him to have a one-on-one -on -one with them because, you know, the pro owner actually works with them. So I was able to, you know, convince him to go talk to them. And, uh, and I was able to coach the team on self-organization. That means you don't have to listen to, you have to be, you know, self-organized. You can listen to what the stakeholders are doing. You have to be able to, you know, uh, work with okay. each other. Yes. So when you were a young scrum master many years ago, right? And you first doing this, and this is for the young, the new scrum masters. How did, did you feel a little intimidated, a little worried about, you know, trying to fix that thing that was coming, protecting your team? How did you get past that, that moment of like, uh oh, I got to fix this? Yes, I was. I was intimidated, you know, when I first started, but, um, uh, I was like my second week in the job, I was just able to summon up courage and be like, Hey, you hired me for a purpose. Yeah. You hired me for a reason. And if I'm not doing this at, at the time, when am I going to do it? Yeah, and yeah. that's when I walked up to the stakeholders and actually laid out the fact. This is how we actually practice crime. This is not, if you, if you, if you come in and um, try to distract the team or tell them what to do, then this is no scrum. So, and, so uh, you're there, you were there for a purpose. You understood that. And that helped you get past that initial, like, uh Oh, I got to engage, yes, but I'm, I, I was hired yes. for a reason. This is my yes. job. Yes. So that, that is, that is awesome. It 
wasn't easy, but I was able to summon up courage and be like, hey, let, let me, I have to do this. I have to and do after this. eight years, I guess it's like, like second minutes. nature to you right now, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. So here, I got a couple little fun questions left here. So continuous learning. I'm always a big as an agile coach, mentor for a, a lot of scrum masters, agile, agile coaches, just people and people I know. You know, continuous learning, and we do the retrospective, right? We're trying to learn how we do things. So has there been a training class or a book that you read le recently and that you like? Did you apply it to what you do? Is there anything out there recently that you've seen? Yeah, um, I always have my Scrum Master with me. Scrum Master, Master, master I okay. always have it with me. Um, Scrum Methodology, I always have it with me. And of course, I always have my... Um, Scrum guide with me, yeah. Scrum guide with me, okay. and like, yes. I, then um, uh, agile retrospective. The retrospective, agile retrospective. Yes, I always have that with me as well. Okay. And then um, another book, coaching on agile team is I always have it handy. You know, okay. a, a few few books I, I I read in last um, um last three months. Okay, awesome. Um, now one more question. And then we'll, and then we'll pretty much wrap it up. But we want to know what is not in your LinkedIn profile. What is so? I saw this interview one time and I really liked it. The idea of like, okay, I've seen what you do. The question is, what is not in your LinkedIn profile that we would like to know about you? Um, the fact that um, I'm I'm a very 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 hardworking person. Okay. I and then um. My job is my job is very very important to my you know to my everyday uh, happiness. I'm always and I'm always looking for a way uh, to improve my skills and and knowledge in order to you know always come out tops in uh, whatever I do in this in this Chrome this Chrome world. Okay. And I would like to, yeah I would like you to know that. What do you what do you do outside of Scrum? What's what um, is, what is your life outside of techy geeky? Coding, <laughs> Agile Scrum, you know, we always read these books, you know, you got the thick tech books. What outside that, that, that spikes sparks your interest in life? Um, I listen to music a lot. Yeah. And um I like to meditate. I like to sit down and meditate, think about things I'm you know, I'm 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 gonna do and like I'm I'm always applying scrum one way or the other, thinking oh, hey, what did I do last week? Am I gonna do the same thing this week? You know, I'm constantly um, trying to brush up my skills, trying to you know um, make sure I live my my day my 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 daily life happily. Okay. And um, yes, yes. All right, great. I guess that that's it from from our interview. Thank you very much for how was it, how'd it go? Did it go?